Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Ryzen powered pre-built PC from HP known as the Victus 15L. Now they do offer a few different models and recently I was at my local Walmart. I saw this one on the shelf and it was $699. I'm going to tell you right now, do not buy this one for $699. Check out eBay because I was actually able to get this shipped to my house brand new in the box for 410. I did have to bid on it. it. Took a couple days, but they are listed up on eBay right now and you can pick them up for this cheap if you're interested in it. And at that price tag, I think this would actually make sense for some people. And what we have here is a Ryzen 5 5600G paired up with an RX 6400. Now before we jump into everything, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. So this is known as the Victus 15L. I will leave a link to eBay in the description. And like I mentioned, I wouldn't pick this up at full price. $699 is a bit much for what we're getting here. But at a lower price tag, $400 to $450, it definitely might be worth it to some people. In this video, we're going to be testing out some PC games. We're going to see how it performs right out of the box. And we're also going to be testing out some high-end emulation. So when it comes to the specs of the version I have here for the CPU, we've got that AMD Ryzen 5600G, 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 3.9 gigahertz, and a boost up to 4.4. This one came with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 pre-installed, running in single channel at 3200 megahertz, but this will support up to 32 gigabytes, and I would highly recommend upgrading the RAM on this. Even adding another 4 gig stick will help out. We've got a dedicated Radeon RX 6400 with 4GB of GDDR6 VRAM, 512GB M.2 SSD, does have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and is running Windows 11 out of the box. I know there's some people out there that aren't huge fans of the RX 6400, and when it comes down to it, I like this card for small form factor builds. But keep in mind, they do offer one with a GTX 1650, or if you want to spend more, you could get a 6600. So I've had a couple days to spend with this unit, and as you can see up front there, we've got that Victus logo. It's actually LED backlit, and it's kind of like a little infinity mirror. It looks pretty good. When it comes to using this as your everyday PC, you're not going to have an issue with it. I mean, getting your schoolwork done, checking email, document editing, you want to do some web browsing, some 4K video playback. The 5600G by itself with the integrated graphics actually offers more than enough for that. But since we're working with the dedicated RX 6400, it's going to offload that GPU performance over there. And when it comes to 4K playback, it's great. Plus, we've got that Wi-Fi 6 built in. Personally, with my desktops, I always like to go wired with it. But just keep in mind that, you know, if you can't access Ethernet, then you do have Wi-Fi 6. And it's a really smooth experience. But, you know, they're selling this as a gaming desktop. So that's exactly what I want to jump into. We're going to get right into a little bit of gaming, then we'll run some benchmarks. We'll move back over to testing more games out. Plus, we definitely want to see how this thing handles emulation, and I got a good feeling it's going to do an amazing job. First up, we've got Forza Horizon 5, and I do want to give you a look at the settings real quick. We're at 1080p with no resolution scale and medium settings. This is one of those games that does work really well on lower end hardware. And with it set up like this, we can actually get an average of 87 FPS out of it. I mean, fully playable experience, looks really good at 1080p medium settings. And the RX 6400 is a relatively low powered card. If you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, we're only pulling a maximum of 32 watts from the GPU. And you'll see the CPU spike up higher than our GPU wattage. 
But overall, this whole system itself is a relatively lower powered unit when you compare it to other PCs its size with a dedicated GPU. The next thing I wanted to test was Spider-Man Remastered, and I actually expected this to do a little better than it did. 900p low FSR set to performance. Now at 1080p medium settings, we can lock this at 45 FPS, but I was really hoping we could do at least low with some FSR 1080 at 60. Unfortunately, it just falls under. Now maybe in the future with some more updates to the drivers and the game itself, we can run this really well on the RX 6400. But right now the sweet spot here is kind of 900p. Next thing I did was run a couple benchmarks, and the first one here is Geekbench 5, Single Core, 1489, Multi, 6781, falling right in line with 5600G. We could definitely get a little more out of it if we had some tuning capabilities with this PC, but being a pre-built like this, we just don't have anything in the BIOS to up the performance. Checking out some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Night Raid, we got a total score of 33,787. Firestrike came in with a 10,407, and finally, Time Spy with a 3,849. Given the specs we have here, these scores aren't looking bad at all, but these are all synthetic, so let's go ahead and move over to some more real-world gaming. Checking out The Witcher 3 at 1080p medium settings, no hair works on whatsoever. With these lower-end cards, it definitely kills performance. But with it set up like this, the game still looks absolutely amazing, and we're getting an average of 84 FPS out of this one. So you could definitely go with a medium-high mix, you really just need to kind of see what works for you. But even just set at medium, really good performance. Ugly bastard. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, 1080p, low-medium mix, no resolution scale. Now unfortunately, at full medium settings, I did get a few dips under 60. So if you did want to run it like that, I would recommend turning that resolution scale, I'd say around 85%. It would alleviate any of those dips. But medium settings, 1080p, we're getting an average of 67 FPS. And finally here for the PC games, we've got God of War 1080p original settings FSR set to performance, and it's doing much better than I thought it would. I thought we'd actually have to take this down to low settings or even ultra performance at 1080p. But with this, I would go ahead and lock it at 60, turn V-Sync on, and play through the whole game like this. It still looks great at 1080p, even though we have FSR on set to performance. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is some high-end emulation, and first on the list we've got Wii U using SimU, 1080p Vulcan backend, Bayonetta 2, this is one of those games that does perform really well. I also tested Breath of the Wild, it will run it at 1080p 60, but I prefer playing that game at 30, and of course since it's going to run it at 60, 1080, it's going to run it just fine at 30. But when it comes to Wii U emulation using SimU, we've got plenty of power on the CPU and GPU side of things. Next up, we've got some Xbox 360 using the Zinnia emulator, and something like Red Dead will run at 30. 60 is a little out of the question with a system like this, and even on my high-end rig, I have a hard time running that game at 60 with this emulator. But here's Forza 2, one of my go-to tests. We can run this at a constant 60, the game still looks great, and with this setup, there's going to be a lot of 360 games that are fully playable. And the final one we're taking a look at here is PS3 using RPCS3. We are upscaled to 1080p, and I didn't use the FSR setting from RPCS3. I've actually had really good luck with the 5600G just all by itself with its integrated graphics, but paired up with the RX 6400, we can definitely upscale these games. So when it comes down to it, this is definitely not a $700 PC, but I do think it's doing a really good job for around $400 to $450 if you can pick one of these up on eBay used or maybe kind of offloaded at a lower price. The first thing I would do is add a little more RAM. I would go with another 8 gig stick, but if you want to keep the price down, an extra 4 gigs would definitely help out with everything. Plus, we do have an unused 8-pin connector, so we can add a beefier GPU down the road. I could definitely see somebody adding an RTX 3060 to this, and you can get some really good 1440p gaming out of it. But, you know, going any higher than that with the built-in power supply isn't going to work out too well. But we do have options to upgrade the GPU that's in here. But for the time being, you can game on the RX 6400. It's totally possible, as you saw in this video. Now, you're not going to get those 1440p and 4K resolutions that everybody wants with their gaming PC, 
but this is a nice little 1080p machine if you can pick it up at the right price. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I will leave a couple eBay links in the description. There are several of these listed, but you will have to bid on them, so just keep an eye out. If there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.